Worldwide 24 7, 365. Worldwide. That was my impression. That, that was my impersonation of Pitbull. But no, this is a show where Ohio froze down. That is true. This is a show where Ohio froze down. Ohio is on fire. And I am the host, Daniel Diesel. And we have another great show for you tonight. It's going to be most excellent ever. Um, tonight, we got a continuation of Dane's Any Music Madness. It's Group C. We have 12 new, 12 new artists from the state of Ohio. I'll talk about that in a little bit. And also, I got special guests coming up tonight um, from the hit podcast made right here in Ohio from the hit podcast, I Wish I Was Laughing. And notice the implant of words. It's not I wish, it's Irish. It's Irish I was laughing. Dan Dean and Wendy Ferguson is going to be here tonight. And it's going to be excellent. I look forward to talking to them. That crosses a major bucket list off. Uh, it, may, it crosses some of my bucket list. I said that wrong. I'll get it right one day. Um, but they are coming around the top of the hours when we're supposed to start the interview. So they are happy. They, they, they've been talking to me online. They're happy to be on my show for the first time ever. They've waited a while. Because they've been on Don Smith's show a thousand times. They wanted something new, they told me. No, I'm just kidding. They, um, they, 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 yeah, they, yes, they have been on many um, radio shows throughout the area. Don Smith's show. They've been on other podcasts. They haven't been on mine yet. So they get to cross this one. They get to cross me off their list as well. Um, and it'll be, um, I'm going to have a lot of fun. That's coming in a half hour from now. Um, a little announcement about Dayton's Indie Music Madness. We have an outright winner for Group B. Um, an outright winner this time. Um, and she will move on to the finals. It is Kaylee Downs. That is Kayleen Downs for in her track six years. They got the most votes. It recorded, um, I believe, eight eight votes. And it was it was the most in that group for to help her move on. And so right now we got five finalists. I'm looking to put twelve artists in the finals. So a big list right now. I have five. And based on um, wild card votes, we'll have some more get in there. So we can have a few more from Group B come in. We can have a bunch from Group C get in. Um, but yes, um, Kaylee Downs is going to join Abertooth Tiger. I'm sorry, Abertooth Flankin. I said their name wrong. It's live radio. Just don't judge me. It's Abertooth Flankin, Fuzz Lord. Then we have um, Charlie Jackson in the Heartland Railway. And another group that's going, to, another artist that's going to be in it is Icicle. He is a hip-hop artist from Dayton. Um, of course, his name is um, Isaac Williams, but you know him as Icicle. So those five are in the finals right now. I need seven more people to join me in the finals next Wednesday night. Because here's how voting, voting for the finals is going to be. Um, the vote, for Group C, the voting is going to end this Monday before midnight. And we'll have an outright winner plus wall card spots determined. And you'll hear from me immediately because um, I, I need to see how many people I can get to be in the studio live for the show.
Wiffle High was on fire, and of course I am the one only Daniel Diesel. I have my guests of the evening. They are two guests. They are they're really making some noise here in the area. They are two longtime stamp comedians, but also they are the host of the very own podcast. It's a hit podcast it's called Irish. I was laughing. It is the one only Dan Dean and Wendy Ferguson. So here they are. Say hello, you two. What is happening? Double D. My fellow Double D. Yes, we're Double D twins. That's right. Yeah, man. And Wendy, she can be WF. Right on. Yes, there you go. Well, that's perfect. Well, thank you two for being here tonight. I want to talk to you guys for a little bit. Now, you two have been in stand-up comedy for a little while now. I'm just curious. Um, do you guys have any memories of the very first time you did stand-up comedy? Any well, highlights? I feel like everybody has that kind of memory. I mean, nobody ever forgets their first time. I'm sure you yourself have a very vivid memory of your first time on stage. Yes. Mine was at the same place, Wiley's Comedy Joint, way back in 2011. Yeah. And I just remember it being a very hot crowd. They were a great crowd, and I feel like that is probably the biggest reason that I continued doing comedy. I know a lot of people come out do some bar show or whatever for the first time, not get any response from the audience, and just have a miserable time of it. And yeah. A lot of times you don't see those guys come back because yeah. they didn't get the experience of what it's like to get all those great laughs and have a good crowd reaction. You know, you get that, and it's just a rush. So if you're if you're with a very friendly and open crowd, then. If you come back the second time and bomb, you're like, all right. So these are two different aspects of the game. Is it worth it? And it's always worth it. Yeah, absolutely. Um, Winnie, do you have any memories that you wish to share? Um, my actual first time doing comedy, my friend dared me, and he okay. opened up his club on a day it wasn't supposed to be open. Okay. Told me to bring a crowd. I had no idea what I was doing, really. And um, yeah. My parents came and sat in the front row and heckled me, and Aww. I roasted them back, and it was, like he said, once you hear them laughs, and I, I felt like I was in my, in my, where I was supposed to be. I felt like I was doing what I was supposed to be doing. So Excellent. Good. You guys were on the right path after that night. So, um, and of course, um, it's, I, tomorrow will be two years ago today that I had my very first show. I was part of uh, Michelle Metzner's stand-up comedy class. Now, you two have heard Michelle Metzner. Well, I've heard of her just because of the class. The class, I yes. I went to school at Wright State, and so I kind of keep in touch with some people around here. Cool, yeah, because I was in her class two years ago, um, and we did um, a show at the um, Dayton's Funny Bone, which is um, kind of like close to Kettering, Ohio, and um, it was my very first time doing a stamp comedy show in front of a crowd like that, and um, I practiced a lot, and it was fun. It was a lot of fun. It's, it's, it's a rush, because... Um, I kind of get how you guys feel and all the other comedians because I've, I've talked to comedians before, but I never knew, I never been in their shoes until I'd done that. And just, you just, you really feel it. All those people looking at you like, oh, oh am I going to be funny? They going to throw a beer bottle at me. It, it's an adrenaline rush. So I, I see, I, I see how you two would like being in stand-up comedy. Yeah, different people handle it differently. Too. Yeah. You know, they say public speaking is the number one fear. Yes. In, in the United States, and that's just something that's never been an issue for me. I wasn't even yeah. super nervous going on stage for my first time, but I know a lot of people, that's the big obstacle they have to get over is that, that stage fright. Stage fright, yes. Now, that, that, helped, that class helped me get over stage fright, so that was, yeah, that's a big hurdle. Now, I want to know from you two, um, who would you like, who would you idolize growing up, like from stand comedy standpoint, um, since you two both got into, who did you look who did you guys like during that time growing up? Well, I think we're going to have similar answers to this one. I that's know fine. That's fine. The very first comedian I ever saw was Eddie Murphy. Oh. I watched Eddie Murphy Raw. Right oh, that's a good one. Like, this dude, what in the world is going <laughs> on here? And he was just killer. I loved watching that. And, of course, I like George Carlin, guys like that. You know, back then, back when, when we were kids, there wasn't as much stand-up. You didn't have as much choice at the time. You know, you just had a, a few of those guys. And then later on, you yeah. hear about guys like Richard Pryor. You know, yes. That kind of guy, Red Fox. They're just all, I mean, anybody doing comedy at that time was pretty phenomenal. Well, you touched up on what it was like in the 80s. Um, we, there's so much access to stand-up comedy now with YouTube 
and podcasting. But before that, there was um, there was really not a lot of places you could see comedy in the 80s. Like, a stand-up comedy special was a, it was a huge deal at the time. That kind of told people they were a big deal, that they were being put on TV, because there weren't that many channels. And even radio, not a lot of radio um, stations or shows featured stand-up comedy. So I, I would, I'm trying to put myself in your shoes... I'm your guys' shoes that probably during the 70s and 80s. So what you, what you Comedy was hard. Yeah, we're old. I'm, I'm sorry, yes. You, is, yeah, yeah um, it's a nice way of me it. saying that you guys are old. Yeah. But I'm just, um, that's amazing. Because, yeah, we, um, there's so many places to watch comedy now. And some of them are good. Some of them are not so good. You just never know. So I'm just, um, yeah, that's that, that's very interesting. Yeah, Eddie Murphy, I've seen that um, Raw special. That, it's, it was really good. It had me laughing. So I want to ask you, um, now this is mostly for Dan Dean. Um, you do serve in the Army. You have served in the Ohio Army National Guard. Um, I was wondering, have you had a chance to perform stand-up comedy while you're over there? Oh, yeah, absolutely. I just got back from about a nine-month deployment yeah. in Kuwait. And while I was there, yeah. I didn't want to get too rusty. You, know, you can't be off stage for too long or okay. you're going to lose it a little bit. And so I wanted to try to make some opportunities to get on stage. Yes, and I set up a bi-weekly open mic, and I would get four or five guys come out every week. We always had a, a pretty good crowd. Yeah. So, uh, I think that's pretty standard for the military. Everybody's kind of there on post, trapped. Yeah. No place to go, nothing to do. They're a little bit starved for entertainment. Yes. So they come out to see a couple comedians. You know, they don't have to be big names or whatever. They just want to go out and, and have a good time. So yes. So every other week I'd get up there and I'd do some of my material and always had a real good time doing it but well, i'm just curious how does the word get out like say um, dan dean's gonna do a comedy show for the troops and you're over there serving how does the word get out what's the best way what i did was create a poster for it and poster. did it old school i would print out 50 flyers cool. and I'd go paste them up on the bus stops and in the bathrooms and the chow hall any place there were people a lot i would yeah. put up some posters and, and people would come out check it out of course you know it's not like we it's wasn't vietnam yeah we weren't just out in the middle of nowhere with no contact with the regular world we yeah. had internet and that kind of thing so well let me ask you next like on your during your off time while you're serving in the army what things are you able to do or, or are you allowed to do when you're serving well, it kind of depends where you are okay you know, pretty much. If you're here in the United States and you're serving, it, it's basically just like a regular job. You go do your thing, and then when you're done, you can leave base and, and go live your life just like anybody else. Okay. Being over there in Kuwait yeah. is very similar type of situation. Yeah. I mean, it's a lot more difficult to get on and off base, a lot stricter regulations on yeah. that. But you can always go out. You can go to Kuwait City, go out to eat, go to the mall, go to a movie, do whatever there is to do and on base there's actually quite a bit to do where i was there was a swimming pool we had a, kind of a makeshift movie theater but it was a nice movie theater there were all kinds of restaurants all a lot of yeah oh food restaurants there was a chili's on base and, you know kuwait's a dry country you couldn't drink oh i yeah, I understand that you can't drink while you're yeah, serving the military and of course Kuwait isn't the same as a lot of places. You know, you're up in Iraq. Yeah. You're basically confined to the base unless you're off post doing a mission of some sort. Okay. But, you know, they have certain things that you can do, little clubs that you can get together. You know, it, it's more of a social thing there where you get together and just kind of hang out and cool. play cards, uh, yeah. have a dance or something like that. A dance. Just, that, that sounds like a lot of fun, man. A lot of people will do one of two things. They'll become gym rats. And they'll go to the gym all the time every day and mm. just get huge. Oh, or yeah. they will kind of get together and play cards or they'll watch movies. Okay. And just kind of hang out in the barracks. Okay. Uh, Man, that's really there. fascinating. Because, yeah, I never served in the military. So I'm, I am I am kind of clueless on what would go on over there. So that's really cool to hear. But I do have a follow-up question based on Military Live. You mentioned restaurants like Chili's. Was there a restaurant... That, that that's over where you were serving, where we wouldn't have here in Ohio that you've been to, or not just restaurant, maybe like any venue. Was there some place that stood out to you that was like, wow, I can't go anywhere else in the world to do something like this? Not really on post. I mean, if you go off post, off post. you know, Kuwait City or whatever, they would have all kinds of different things right there. Okay. You know, I know up in Iraq they had, on post they had a little hookah bar. 
Oh. And that was a big, you know, hookahs are, are big in the Middle East. A lot of people smoke. Okay. So they have these bars and everybody would get together. And okay. That. Well, that sounds really cool. That's very fascinating. I want to ask you, are you familiar at all with R. Lee Armney? Absolutely. Yes, he did die recently. Do you have any stories or have any um, connections with uh, watching his work, or did you by chance meet him? Sure. I'm just wondering about him. Sure, yeah. Arlie Ermey was huge in the military community. Yeah. Mean, he was um, in the Marine Corps. He was a drill instructor in the Marine Corps when he was in, so that kind of translated over into his Hollywood career, and he actually yeah. just sort of got typecast as that military hard-nosed guy which fit him perfectly, and he parlayed that into a very successful career. Yes, he did. with Full Metal Jacket and those kinds of movies or whatever. But the first time I ever saw him, met him, was right before my first deployment. Well, I was in the Marine Corps yeah. in 2003. We were at Camp Pendleton, and huh. we were. it was right when the war first kicked off in Iraq. Oh, that one, okay. And we were heading over there. And we just happened to be walking into the clothing sales, the uniform sales shop. Yeah. And I kind of looked over in the parking lot, and here's a dude standing over here with another guy. And I had to do a double take. I looked over, and my buddy's over here next to me. I kind of elbowed him. I'm like, hey, man, that's that's Arlie Army over there. That's the guy. And he was just on post doing uh, a visit to, to the Marines there. And he just, uh, he kind of looked over at us and waved or whatever. And I don't get super starstruck or anything. I just kind of waved back. I'm like, hey, Gunny, what's going on? (laughs) You know, walked in. Later on that year, he came to visit the troops in Kuwait at the base where I was. We were kind of back and forth from Iraq and Kuwait. And we happened to be in Kuwait at the same time he was there. So a lot of guys got to meet him at the time. Cool. He is also, or well, not anymore, but he was an NRA member. He's a big gun guy and he would come to the national matches every year which are held at camp perry in mm, yeah. northern ohio okay and i worked those matches a couple of years mm. and so he would come shoot at those and he, he was basically treated as a celebrity but i got to meet him again while he was up there firing and he was a very nice guy very down-to-earth guy wow was, yeah like i said he was kind of a celebrity so they were going to kind of let him off of some of the duties that you would normally have and he was like no you know I, i'm just a shooter here like anybody else i want to wow. do what everybody else has to do cool so, yeah he was a very good very humble guy and oh man that's I was, great i was sad to hear him going yeah yeah it was yeah he's always the um guy uh, he was in another movie i always liked i'm forgetting the name of it, it had jack black and um, oh saving silverman yeah, I, yeah, he, he was, was in that, that one of my favorite roles of his was that film that was funny yeah and he was very off, like he was yelling and stuff like he normally would in the other films, but it was an offbeat situation. Like he was helping people that he normally in other films would probably be beaten up, but now he was helping them. So the role kind of switched a little bit. And I, he had some range as he did a film like that, he, even with the typecast that he had. Yeah, he, yeah like I said, he, he had talent. played that one role, but he, he had a little bit of range as an actor. Yes, he did. Yeah, he was pretty good. Um, so rest in peace to Arlie Armney. Now, uh, we're talking about the Army. I, I know one of the things you got to do over there when you're doing your drills, you got to do push ups. Like, I can, in the movie Old School, I can hear Will Ferrell and Al saying, You drop down, you give me 10, and something like that. So I'm just curious, what is the most push ups either one of you have ever done at one time? What's your personal record? My personal best is 100. Okay. I've done 100 in a row, you know. Now, Wendy, do you wish to answer this? What's the most you've ever done? <laughs> actually, her answer is fairly impressive. Okay. <laughs> actually can do 20 the real push-up not the girly push-ups but yeah real well that's that might be the most i can do i would well, have that's expected cool. like five at the most from her so mm-hmm. she can do, yeah, that, right. yeah that's, i'm impressed <laughs> well i have my own personal record of course i did this a while ago when i was um, younger in, in high school what is we had a um a drill sergeant or uh, not sorry i don't know if he was a sergeant or not but he was recruiting people at my high school chances and we were what's that chances are he was Probably. Anyway, um, he um, he was um, the students were kind of um, we were kind of messing with him a little bit. He was asking if he wanted if we could get a sit up contest, not sit up, a push up contest going. And I, he said, "Sure, if you want to go ahead." I, he was bored, so he wanted something that could be he could be entertained by. No, that wasn't boredom. That's a good recruiting tactic. Good, good, well, well, there you go. Um, but well, it's one he didn't. Um, there was one kid he did like um, seventy. He played for the basketball team, so he was already in great shape. 
I don't think we had any intention of joining the army, but I'm sure he was hoping that, because he always want. I, you know, the army wants to always find their talent. But I did it myself. I was we were kind of goofing with the um, officer, and I did this, I did this contest as well. I did about 34, and before I got tired, and that was and those were real push-ups, and that was before I finally crapped out. And of course, when I was probably 18 when I did this. I'd have to. That's a solid starting point. Edit, well, yeah, because I I did a lot of gym class as well, so I um, so I don't know if I can do. Th I might be lucky if I did four now because I don't really work out anymore. I'm in my um early thirties. I do this for a living, so I don't really get a chance to work out and work on the glutes I mean, like I'd like to. Right. we can do it right now if you want. Oh no, maybe <laughs> maybe next year. Maybe right. can, if I get in better shape next year, maybe I'll have you guys back and maybe we'll do a push up contest. I'm not ready for it. All right. All right, so that's brain check. You get trained up, and we're going to come back and do this. All right, brain check. Live with Ohio's on Fire. I'm still with my guest, Winnie Ferguson and Dan Dean, because they're from Hit Podcast. I wish I was laughing. And of course, if you want to call us, yeah, or you want to communicate with us, call us at 937-775-5555, or you can visit the online website, www.issue169.org, and you can send me a message as um, we have a good conversation on hand. Um, so if you wish to talk to us, please do that now. Um, so um, I want to ask you guys a few things about... Um, I wish I was laughing. Podcast. Um, that is a cool name. I was just wondering, where did you come up with the name for? How did you come up with the name? I wish I was laughing. So that was actually my thing. And the reason I call it that is because, besides being half black, I'm also half okay. Irish. <laughs> I'm also half Irish Scottish, and so to embrace that heritage, I used to wear a kilt a lot. Okay. 
but the only time it was really super socially acceptable to do that was on St. Patty's Day. So yeah. I had to come up with a good reason to wear that kilt. And so I started wearing it on stage oh. when I performed. Cool. So when I started my own comedy brand, I just called it I Wish I Was Laughing Comedy to kind of go along with the whole kilt thing. And then when we started the podcast, I just kind of translated that over to Irish I Was Laughing Radio. Yes. Wendy also being Irish, so she fits right in. Cool, uh, yes. As a leprechaun. So. Right on. But oh. I am actually Irish and Scottish as well, so that's kind of cool. Yes, that's a good combination. Now, I want to know if you two, can you guys recall an episode that you are very proud of for Irish I Was Laughing? There are a lot of episodes that stand out in my mind, but the ones that I always really liked doing were our 50th and our 75th episodes where we had a contest, the Who's the Number One Fan Contest. Okay. We had a couple of the longtime listeners, a couple of the big fans come in, and we asked them some questions about the show, and they had a little contest to see who could answer the most questions and who was the number one fan. Those were always a lot of fun kind of rehashing everything that we've done. All right, now who won that contest? Do you remember? The first one was a local comedian named Gary Henry. Oh, I've had him on before, yeah. yes. Yeah. Great guy. He won the 50th episode, and then for the 75th anniversary, he came back and defended his title Ooh. against another gentleman named David Dolph. Okay. Out of Beaver <laughs> yeah. Creek. And David won <laughs> that one. All right. Well, that is great. Was any? I'm curious. Was there any prizes for people that won this contest? Oh, absolutely. We had amazing prizes <laughs> for, for those people. For the first one, one of the prizes was a rap CD. That okay. I bought from a gentleman out of the back of a rape van at a gas station. Oh, that was, okay. That we had talked about before, and there was also a half-used can of Skull that okay. I found in my car. Yes. Yeah. And amongst other prizes. Oh. And for the second one, amongst the prizes was one of the scabs from my vasectomy oh. surgery that I had. Yeah, he's not right. There, there were all kinds of great prizes. Oh. Those those. Not great prizes. Well, that, well, what I... What are you talking about? Those are amazing. <laughs> those are keepsakes from Terrible our time. Prize. I feel bad for Gary Henry because he won all of that. <laughs> he, he has a lifetime of... Memories from those prizes there. Exactly. Poor, exactly. Well, poor guy. But but that, but that sounds like a lot of fun. Yes, yeah, those um, milestone episodes of yours. So that's really cool to hear. Um, do any of you two, um, do you guys listen to any other podcasts? Oh, I listen to a ton of podcasts. Any that stand out, your favorites? The first one I listen to every week, twice a week actually, is Bill Burr's podcast, the Monday Morning podcast. Oh, yeah, that one, yeah. He is my favorite comic. I listen to him every week twice a week i listen to the joe rogan experience yeah there's a lot of interesting guests on there I yes listen to burt kreischer's burt cast yeah a lot. he also has some good guys on there and, and he's a good guy himself i like burt burt yes and then there are several local comedians who also have some podcasts that i listen to a lot yes absolutely and winnie what about you I listen to absolutely no podcast. She doesn't at all. just the she just the one that you star in. No, she does not listen to it. I don't to listen it. to it either. Um, I have listened to some podcasts with Dan. Okay. And yeah, I've heard her. some cool ones. Bill Burr, <laughs> of course, he's amazing. He's my favorite comedian right now as well, along with Dave Chappelle. But um, yeah, I what was the one with the two chicks that I absolutely hate? <laughs> I can't say the name of it on the air. Yeah, it's got a nasty. Oh, okay. But it drove me insane. Okay. And then, um, but Bill Burr is just, it's totally cool. I love that one. But no, I don't regularly listen to podcasts. No. Well, that's, all right, that's fine. Um, I listen to some when I get a chance. Um, but yeah, there's a lot out there. So there's, I feel like there's, there's a podcast for everything out there now. You like comedy or bisectomy stuff. So maybe perhaps Gary Henry can let us look up a podcast to, to learn what he just won from you in his, in your contest. Yeah, they have some for everything now. Um, um, right now, during my show, you guys may have noticed, I'm hosting a little tournament called Dayton's Indie Music Madness. So I'm having my own little contest. And the prizes will be better than what you gave to Gary. I, I hope they're better, but uh, well, uh, we'll see. But anywho, um, but um, anyway, it's local music artists that um, they're competing for votes online. Whoever gets the most votes based on their track. They will wind up, they'll be considered the best music artists of the um, Ohio music scene. 
So it's a fun little tournament I'm hosting. Well, I want to know is, are you too upset that you're not in this tournament? I mean, I'm pretty much amazing at everything I do, <laughs> except yeah. music. That's something I don't have a lot of talent to do. So I okay. don't know how So you and Wendy's doing. not going to release an acoustic album anytime uh, soon? I don't Trust think me, that's you don't want to hear me sing. Yeah, oh, well, okay. Midget vocal cords don't yeah, quite just, vibrate. Oh, I can the right break level. glass probably. <laughs> uh, okay, well. <laughs> and I'm not. I'm not much better. I'm not gonna lie. Okay, well, I was hoping you you two could have a career change, but for next year's tournament, but I did. Ha I played a mean snare drum when I was in middle school. Okay, so snare drum. Maybe I can come do a snare drum solo. Yes, there you go, and put that. Or there you. Well, there you go. <laughs> But we have something to work on for next year. You 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 record some of a snare drum, and I'll work out so we can have our push-up yeah, contest push next up year. We have we have homework assignment. We have a homework assignment for next year. Um, right now on TV, um, reality TV is really popular right now. I'm just curious. There's been like reality competition shows for stand-up comedy and other things involving talent, such as America's Got Talent. Do you guys watch reality TV? I don't watch a whole bunch of it. The only reality TV I've ever watched is The Ultimate Fighter, the UFC. Oh, that, I've heard that, yeah. Reality show. That's about the only one I ever watch. I don't do a lot of the singing ones or the talent ones. You know, I'll, I'll watch some of it, like on YouTube, when, when Katy Perry sexually harasses somebody or whatever. Oh, okay. And it goes viral, <laughs> I'll watch that. But. Excellent. Well, that, that's a classic there whenever she does that. Well, I want to follow up with, um, you mentioned you don't watch a lot of um, reality TV contests, even the stand-up ones. Now... No, there's a lot of non-TV stand-up comedy contests, like the one I can think of is the fireworks contest in July over Adam Wiley's, and there's a bunch throughout the world, pretty much. Have you competed in any, and what do you think of them? I've competed in a couple of contests, and they're always fun yeah. to compete in, but comedy contests are not the fairest. Oh, okay. They're, they're not the best judge of who is the best comedian. Okay. Good. Typically, whoever wins that contest is the person who has the most of their friends in the audience. Oh, I see. That are cheering the mo the, the loudest. Okay. And they're typically just not set up just right. But they always are a lot of fun. They're yeah. They're a good audience, and I enjoy doing them. But yeah. you also typically have to pay yes. to be in them, and I'm certainly not going to do that to be in a contest that it's not going to judge if I was funnier than somebody or not. Yeah, so that, that's an interesting take. So you're saying that some of these contests, a person may not be funny at all, but they brought a bunch of their friends and they wind up winning because they got the loudest cheer. I've seen it happen countless times. Oh, uh, okay. So really, I think the best method would be have judges, like be judges that have actually been in comedy. That would be the fairest way. Would you agree? Absolutely. Absolutely. All right. Well, as far as the fireworks thing in, in July, do you think it's that way? Do they have judges that... Uh, or I think they are starting to transition. A transition, bit okay. Way. They did last year when I did it. Well, they have two rounds, and the first round typically goes by audience vote. Right. But they also send more people than one through. So each person yeah. gets to vote for three people. So, yes, the person with the most friends there is going to get that many votes, and they're going to move on, but then two other people move on with them. Yes. So you get two of the funniest people typically that move on with one that may or may not have been funny. And then I think typically in the finals, it's more of a judge's decision. Okay. Well, that balances out a little bit because I want to attend one one year. I've been invited, but I've never been once. I was curious how the fireworks, how, how that played out. I would say if you're going to do a comedy contest, the fireworks contest at Wiley's is probably one of your best bets. Yeah, it's really, really fun. Excellent. Well, that's on my to-do list now. Um, now I want to ask you too, what do you like about the stand-up comedy scene right now, whether it's on a local level or a national level or even a global level? What, what have you noticed and who do you like? So as far as the local scene goes, she and I have talked about this a lot. I think we're both very happy that we kind of came up in the Dayton comedy scene. Yeah. Whereas it's not one of the bigger scenes around and there aren't as many opportunities for stage time. Yeah. It's a very welcoming and accepting group it's a warm bunch of people who yeah. are i would agree yeah genuinely open to helping other people out and willing to go the extra mile yeah Whereas you have scenes like dayton and columbus no, i'm sorry cincinnati and columbus yeah. that are a little bit bigger there is a lot more opportunity for stage time yeah there but 
they tend to be a little bit clicky and exclusionary. Ah. Uh, part of that group. It takes a lot to kind of get yourself into mm. that little group. Kind of so, like being in high school again. Uh, I, was, I was thinking that, kind of like high school in we're some places. pretty happy about the Dayton comedy yeah, scene. And, and don't get me wrong. Scene. Yeah. There are a ton of amazing comics in Cincinnati and Columbus. Yeah. Very yeah. nice people. I like them a lot. But just as a whole, the scenes don't feel as welcoming as they do here in Dayton. I don't know, maybe the Dayton scene feels like that to other people. Other people. Yeah, I mean, but it's never felt because, like that to me. Yeah. I imagine small cities like Dayton, I imagine, I kind of agree that there's not much room for clicks. I am there because I, they, uh, I became a member of Dayton Comics. Someone dragged me in there two years ago, but well, I'm happy to be there, though. So it made it sound like it was a bad thing. And I noticed people, there's very little drama that goes on in there. So I, I kind of noticed that myself. People are like having fun. They're saying, hey, good luck, buddy. Hey, we want you to make that next big gig and hey maybe one day you open up for dave Chappelle, all that good stuff uh, yeah it's a really good vibe at david dave dayton comics and perhaps other small cities i like to think that's probably that way as well in which the big cities yeah that makes a lot of sense there's just because it's so large the cities are so large you probably can't help but join a click over there that's probably correct that might be the case well I have, well what about actual comedians like who do you listen to right now Sam Comey, who do you think is really doing a good job right now? I think we both talked about Bill Burr. Bill Burr, yes. yes. Phenomenal. And Dave Chappelle, obviously, a, kind of a, a local, national yeah, guy. Yeah, that guy's he great. Absolutely amazing. And like I said, Burt Kreischer, Joe Rogan, those guys are okay. amazing comedians. I thought Sarah Silverman had the best Netflix special of the year last year. Yeah. It was amazing. Ali Wong yeah. also had a really good one. Cool. There is so much amazing comedy out there right now. Yeah. It's ridiculous. I mean, yeah. I could sit here and name <laughs> off comedians for an hour that are, are just absolutely phenomenal. They'll have you crying, laughing. Oh. And you can see those any night of the week. You know, go out to some of the, some of the clubs. Yes. The they're open up, they're going to have great talents out there yes so if anybody's interested in that i just encourage you to get out and support live comedy go to some of these local shows see these some guys of the local comedians are amazing some yes of guys see, at absolutely level. should be and you're gonna see them yeah one day with their, uh, yeah they're gonna break through eventually there's a lot of good ones i'm talking to two right now you two are pretty good because i've seen winnie perform and I, dandy and i've seen you perform a few times so yes it's Yes, yeah, it's a really it's a really great pool that we have here in Dayton. So I'm happy I'm happy that I get to, as an audience member I get to watch each guys. And I try to learn because I'm I do want to do I want to do stand up every once in a while. I don't know if I'll ever be make it to the level of Dave Chappelle, but I mean it was hard for me to learn to begin with. So I want to do them periodically. But I got some great teachers because you guys are amazing. Like you guys are it, it's it's a really good scene because um, I just can imagine this was a bad scene if there was only like three good stamp comedians it would probably whittle away and die if that were the case uh, but you guys, it's going to be around for years to come you guys i absolutely agree you know? but i want to know from you two um what are you guys going to be up to this summer whether it's your podcast or any stamp performances that people should know about what are you guys going to be up to oh we, this whole summer Man. well or next month just because i'm because after next week i'm going to be on my vacation so i won't be able to make updates that's why i asked the whole summer we, we have all kinds of stuff going on both of us are going to be on a lot of shows coming up. Yeah. But, you know, there are a couple that kind of stand out in my mind. Okay. The 19th, which is tomorrow night, we're both going to be at the Beaver Creek Moose. Okay. Doing a show out there. April 28th, I have a show at Bookie's Roadhouse in yeah. Columbus. You have a show the 25th, is that yeah, right? Yeah, at Chiefs Lake in Clarksville, Ohio. I'll yeah. be closing that show. That'll be a good one. May 4th, I'll be at Mahogany's Bar in Covington, Kentucky. Yeah. On the 25th, I will be at Wiley's Comedy Joint doing a show out there. Yeah. Then June 9th, again, both of us are going to be in London. Okay. In London, Ohio, at yeah, State that's Theater. Fun, that's a fun show. That's going to be a great show. The great. The 23rd, we'll be at the Hideaway in Parkersburg, West Virginia. Right and of course, you can always hear us on I Wish I Was Laughing Radio on podbean.com, iTunes, Stitcher, the Apple Podcast app, anywhere. Yes, I was about to ask where, where can people can find your show. Yeah, you can find that one there, and 
I'm actually a part of two other podcasts. I just started a brand new Okay, one. tell us about that. It's a military podcast. You know, you said you don't know much about the military or yeah. that lifestyle, and that's specifically what this show is designed for. I oh. interview a different military veteran each week and we okay. talk about their time it's called 50 shades of camo okay <laughs> brand new. i've got a couple episodes out right now and several in the can and then i just started one it's more of a local podcast a brand new coffee shop in my hometown called the village cup okay just opened up so this podcast is called the village cup coffee cast wow i go on there with the owner of that and talk the first episode is going to drop tomorrow Excellent. Well, that's amazing. Well, I hope that goes very well for you. So you got three podcasts on your plate. Well, that's all I have. So, um, Wendy Ferguson and Dan Dean, thank you for being on my show. It's been my pleasure. And you guys, I do like Irish Show. I've heard a few episodes. So it's a great podcast. So I look forward to hearing more. And good luck to you two and everything that you do. Thank you very much. Thank you. I'll, I'll try to have you guys on again in the future. Yeah, absolutely. We'll come on anytime. Not again. about love and songs about women and songs about right and wrong. Songs about hunting and songs about fishing and songs that keep me up at night. There's songs about finding that devil in the dark and songs of love and loss. But the best ones are written in the park. This song is written in the park in my Waiting on that Star. Songs about love, songs about fear, songs about parties and drinking beer. This song was written in the parking lot. And we are back live with Ohio is on fire. I think it's now time for everyone's favorite segment. It is now time for O M. V P and that stands for Ohio's most valuable pedestrian. Ooh ah. I'm banging on the table because this is the good part. Yes, but this imaginary award goes to um, a person or a group of people from the state of Ohio or deeply connected to the state of Ohio. They did something very interesting recently. And of course there's always a backstory to why they are the MVP. So let's get to the article. Um, this article I'm going to read is from dispatch.com slash entertainment life. And I'll read a lot of it. It depends on how long the article is. I can read, um, so I'll read part of this one. This is pretty long. But the article is Matters of Taste, 
foods that cause pain are some people's pleasures. So here's the article. You don't just taste the chili pepper with your mouth. Wa eyes water, palms sweat, noses begin to drip, tongues feel like they are on fire. Kind of like my show. And here's a quote. Usually things are bad. They're irritants, says Chris Simons, a food scientist at Ohio State University who studies the unique ingredients we relish or reject with our entire bodies. Another quote from him, you would expect nobody would like it, it just so happens some of us like those sensations. The phenomenon isn't limited to spicy peppers. The menthol and mint products leaves our mouths feeling cold and fresh. Car carbonated beverages such as tingy, tingle through the nose, onions make us cry, and sasquash, peppercorns, norm our tongues. And who among us haven't suffered the swift punch in the nose of a shbosky, horseradish, or mustard? Simon's work largely focuses on a select group of food compounds that elicit physical sensations by activating the brain receptors that process senses related to pain, touch, or heat, or cold. They're actually activating the same pathways, he says. It's, it's a whole body sense. Um, I'll read, uh, I'll scroll on to the last two um, paragraphs. First, mindfully focus on the signals that your body is sending. Noticing them will evaluate your experience of the meal. And because capsinicin, the, the pepper's fiery compound, is fat and alcohol soluble, consider pairing the dish with a glass of beer or milk or water, which will do a better job of cooling you off and of solving the pain. All right, so you can read this whole article. It is at dispatch.com slash entertainment live. And do um, a search for matters of taste, and you should be able to find it. Um, but I can relate to this because here's the thing. I really like foods that really censor my tastes. Like I love spicy food. Whenever I go to roosters, I have to get the, um, chipotle chicken. And it tastes like about Tabasco sauce. If I could marry a bottle of Tabasco sauce, I would. Cause that's how much I love it. I put it on everything. I put it on, um, French fries. I put it on Philly cheesesteak sandwiches. Put it on cottage cheese. Put on pineapple, donuts. Okay, maybe not donuts. I don't think I, I want to though. I haven't tried it yet. Um, pizza, tacos, um, you name it, I've done it. And um, I can relate that some people can handle it. Some people either they hate it and it really makes them sick to their stomach, or um, they love it. Now there is one food I have had that really makes me sick, or really kind of does affect me is horseradish. Yes, that is the one food that really I can't handle. Then extremely spicy pepper. I do have a tolerance to how spicy I can eat something. It's pretty, I'm, I'm pretty tolerable. I can eat quite, I can eat some really spicy things, but if it's too hot, like that upper, that, that upper notch of spicy, that I can't handle. So that would hurt me as well. I would need my glass of water and milk, as they say in this article. So, um, I think it's really cool that someone from the Ohio State University is conducting this test. Um, and that person is Chris Simons. So he is a scientist from the area, from the um, Columbus, Ohio area. And, um, he's, um, it's a really good article and what he's doing is a really cool test. So, um, and there is, um, I'll tell you, I'll tell you this as well. There's actually, um, a recipe, um, for something called, um, West and Pilato's Porpolio Mole. It's adapted from a recipe in Secrets of the Tasi Cafe by Thomas Fox Everill. The heat can be turned up or down by just in selections of hot versus mild peppers. So here's the recipe to this. You can have this at home tonight. You need one dozen tomatoes. You need six uncooked chilies. Two chipotle peppers, restituted in water. Half a cup of roasted peanuts. Three onions. Six big cloves of garlic. Two teaspoons ground artichoke seeds, one teaspoon of cumin, um, a salt to taste, one fourth cup cocoa, one fourth cup sunflower seeds ro roasted almonds to blackness, one fourth cup measles or tequila, two teaspoons vanilla, two tablespoons maple syrup, one tablespoon apple cider vinegar, and lastly, turkey, preferably dark meat, or chicken, preferably legs and thighs. So yes, that is a real recipe. You can have that tonight. Put some Tabasco sauce on it. With that being said, Chris Simons.
you are for this episode. O M V P. And that stands for Ohio's most valuable pedestrian. A round of applause to Chris Simons. You've made history tonight. the final message of the night so i'm gonna talk a little bit about um this tournament that we're in and um what's gonna happen for the championship show next wednesday night and before i do that i want to recap the songs the track and the college that they're representing as um th these colleges were randomly selected um and assigned to each artist that's in this tournament and if they win the whole tournament i will pledge money to that um college that's part of the of course the winning artists they will win goodies and a physical award that they will that they can hold on to forever and forever. So this and, and I can tell you, um, the typical Johnsons. I'll start with them because they are crushing it right now. They are not messing around. They already have a lot of votes. They are in the lead right now. Um, th their track I played was Sleepwalking. They represent Owens Community College, and then we got Terry Douglas Band. Their track Ridden in the Parking Lot. They represent Eastern Gateway Community College. Then we got Seth Graham. Um, and Whisper Slap, he's representing Stark State College. And then we got Skeleton Hands and their track Flood Spell. They're representing Washington State Community College. Then we got Speaking Sons with Modern Love. They're representing Clark State Community College. Then we got Under Tipper. Um, their track stayed up too late. They're from Ohio State University. The Ohio State University. So they got, got, they got a big college on their hands. Then we got Sillier Scores. Um, and their track, Poster Boys, for Bad Luck. They're representing St. Clair Community College. Because that was the college I used to go to many years ago before I transferred over here. And then we got Wussy 
Um, their track, Gloria. They're representing Edison State Community College. And then we have Yeti in, their tra in his track, Deaf Joke. He's representing Belmont College. We got the Zygots in their track, Gaslight. They represent Marion Techno College. We have $100 Phil in his rap track, Block List. He represents Cleveland State University. And then last on this list, we have Yesterday Kids in their track, Nosebleed. They are representing this very college. They are representing Wright State University. So that means they win this whole tournament. I will pledge even more money to this college than I already do. So there you go. Um, good luck to all 12 artists. Um, I'm keeping in contact with them on Facebook and any other contact that they have. Um, and, I, and I'll tell you um, the work that goes into this. Because um, I have to research these songs in advance. And um, I have to um, listen what songs don't have cussing. Because as part of this tournament, you can't violate the FCC. This, these songs have to be as clean as possible. And that's one of the big things. So i got to listen carefully. Also, I listen, I listen to the quality of the music. Because I want my music to be good. But I also want it to be a variety. Because I do want a true variety in the genres that are played each week. I want some hip-hop. I want some rock. I want some jazz. I want some experimental. Something. Uh, a, mix, a mix and match. But... It's got to be something that's current, because I don't want to put in, like, um, say, a genre if it's not very good, just because I have to have that genre in there. I don't necessarily have to have a genre. Uh, what I need is for um, good artists to um, really be on their game, and you'll hear that in, in, the, in the recorded music and the types of music that they make. And there's so many, We have such a big world out there. So this is my way of putting this in a blender. And, um, and showing this to everyone that's listening at home, because um, I, for the listening audience, they they not they they probably wouldn't know these songs existed unless I took the time to research these. And of course, some of these artists you may have seen in concert already. If you go out to the local music scene and watch a local concert, you may have heard of these guys already by chance. So this is all about discovery. Artists discover other artists. Fans discover artists. And this is a big discovery for myself. I discover fans and artists. So that's why I wanted to do this tournament. And really, since I'm doing this by myself, the best way I can do this tournament is to do it locally. And I'm doing a lot by myself. Um, because I did 36 artists this year. I know the first year, I only did 24. Then I cranked it up to 54. Then it's down to 36. And I want this tournament to be spontaneous. Because... Um, something that's fun something that people enjoy there's always a mysterious element to it so I want this tournament to be as, as mysterious as I could possibly can make it so until next Wednesday night when we crown the champion of Dayton's Any Music Madness I interview bands and we make history once again Dayton, Ohio Dayton, ESU and Wright State University that's the way it is